I have a very special broadcast for you today. Um, in a moment, I'm going to be bringing on uh, Rick Renner. And Rick Renner, for those of you who don't know, and I, I think he really needs no introduction, is a general of the faith. He's an apostolic leader who I consider a global apostle. And he is someone that has a now word for this generation. He knows uh, the pulse of the Holy Spirit for what is happening in the earth right now. He's a Greek scholar, one of the finest Greek scholars uh, alive today, especially from a spirit-filled persuasion. I just want to attempt to ask Rick questions that will bring out the very best for you, the audience today, and how to navigate the days we're living in. Um, I trust that you'll repost this right away, and I, I really encourage you to do so because the words that are going to come out of Rick, I think, will be very helpful for you, your family, and many of those uh, watching that, that mean something to you. I encourage you to repost this, share this, if you would, please, because I know when Rick speaks, there's going to be wisdom released. And so he's in Moscow, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just bring him on. So please welcome with me, if you would, my friend, Rick Renner. I am so happy to have Rick Renner uh, with us today. Uh, you know, Rick, I consider you a general in the faith. I consider you an apostolic leader around the world. And so many of us who are watching right now are so grateful for your ministry and what you've done. And uh, Rick, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you very, very much. And I'm thankful for what you're doing. I'm following you. I was on your website this week. It's so impressive to see what God's doing through your ministry. Thank you, Joseph, for being in my life and for letting me be with you today. I'm highly honored, sir. Um, you, you know, there's a lot happening in the world right now, Rick. There's just a mm -hmm. lot taking place around the world. Uh, you are uh, very acquainted with that. And I just wanted to say, I, there's a saying you have that you say the scriptures tell us about these times, but the scriptures are not written to scare us, but to prepare us. How should we be responding to all that we're seeing right now? How should we respond? Well, first of all, this is not the end. There's going to be more, and there's going to be more after that and more after that because we're living at the end of the age. And Jesus yes. said that there would be pains like childbirths as we go to the end of the age, and your wife has had children. So you know that when a woman begins to have pains of childbirth, they get harder and harder and closer and closer. You know what's interesting? When a woman is having a birth pain, She's not thinking about the one she had five minutes ago. <laughs> she's thinking about the one she had, she's having right now. And when she has yeah. another one five minutes from now, she's not going to remember this one. And it's interesting to me that not so long ago, everybody was talking about COVID, the pandemic. That's all gone. Nobody's even talking about that. And now there's another birth pain. And of right. course, there's a big conflict right now going on in my side of the world. And I live very close to that, much closer than you do. Mm hmm and when this one is finished, there's going to be another one. That's just the season that we're living in. And Joseph, when people don't know the Bible, they're shaken. But isn't yes. it interesting that the Apostle Paul yes. wrote to the Thessalonians in chapter 2, and he told them not to be soon shaken in mind. Don't get upset. These things are going to happen. The Bible tells us everything in advance. And when you know what the Bible says, it just gives you a foundation. For example, when the pandemic started, I had phone calls from Christians all over the world. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Is this the mark of the beast? Do you think that it's this? I said, no, I don't think that it's the mark of the beast. And I don't think it's the end of the world. Well, how can you be at such peace? Because I know the Bible. Yes. And when you know the Bible, it just gives you an anchor for your life. And praise God that you and I have the opportunity to share the Word of God with people. And when you know yeah. what the Scripture teaches, it really doesn't scare you. It really does prepare you. It prepares you. I love you. that. Yes. And you know, when, when you read what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3 about perilous times in the last days, well, here we are, tag. We're it. What a blessing that God chose us. What a blessing. Yeah. Prophets prophesied about this, talked about it for thousands of years, and we're living in the reality of it. We're yes, a special generation. We so we just have to choose how we look at it. Yeah, that's good, Rick. You know, one of the things that I think is so important is that the Bible telling us this and people not having 
a literary concept of the Word of God. They're not grasping what the Bible actually says. If you grasp it, you'll know you're born for this time. We were mm -hmm. made for this. Uh, it's in our spiritual DNA to stand up under these last days. And I just think um, you're a great example of that. You know, the way that you developed uh, the ministry God's given you, both in the former Soviet Union and around the world, building television and all of the things you've done. I believe that that was a precursor or it was predicated uh, in the end of the season we're going into. You really built something because God called you in the middle of very difficult times. And you're a great example uh, of how to stand up under immense odds, just crazy odds. How do you think the church should be responding right now as believers? We know the Bible, but I think maybe we need to be a little more hopeful and encouraging to go forward in what we're looking at. How would you say that to anybody? How would you respond to that? Well, I, I think that the darker it gets, the greater it is for the church, because we shine, we shine yes. the greatest when it's darkness. And so, you know, you know, people are pessimistic. People, for example, people say, well, with everything that's happening, should we continue this project? Should we pull back? Why would we pull back? The yeah. world's not finished. We're to occupy. There's a gospel yeah. that needs to be reached. There are people that need to be saved. There's a church that needs to be established. And yeah. Jesus did not fall off of the throne because of anything that we see in the news. And by the way, Amen. most of what we see in the news, it's fake anyway. That's true. And so... We just need to keep our keep our feet in place, stay anchored, and just do. The word the Lord gives to me over and over, Joseph, is, Rick, continue. Just continue. Just continue. I'll give you an example. Right now, Russia is undergoing these horrific sanctions from around the world, and I'm building a TV studio in the middle of it. Prices now because the sanctions are skyrocketing. The building wow. materials are shooting out of sight. And I stand and look at the building that we're constructing. And a voice said to me, should you pull back? Maybe this is not a time. For, maybe you should just put it on pause. I said, Lord, what do you think? I heard the Lord say, did I tell you that? Continue. Wow. Just continue. continue. These, these things always pass. And Jesus said, those who endure to the ends, to the end are the ones who win the prize. So if we'll just stay in our place, and you know, there's something else important too. The word endure, the Greek mm. word endure, the Greek word hupomene, it doesn't just yeah. mean to endure, it means to maintain the territory that you have gained. Wow. You don't want to do anything to lose your territory that you've worked so hard to gain. And part of enduring is just, it's pressing forward, but it's also making a decision. I'm not going to budge from what I've gained. And I yes. would encourage you with that and anybody that's listening to you. That's some powerful comment, Rick. I, one of the things that's fascinating about your life, and I think this will help some of our viewers and all this, is you were called by God. But one of the things that really caught my attention is you've had not only angelic visitations. You know, Rick, I, I had one angelic visitation in my life. And it was like a prophetic word where the Lord spoke to me. I didn't see the angel, but I heard the voice and it was so shaking and so profound. Uh, it felt biblical to me. Um, you've had not only angelic visitations, but you've had a visitation from Jesus on more than one occasion. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Maybe how that encourages you to keep going? Well, I will talk about it, but I have to tell you that I usually do not talk about it. I haven't talked about it in years. Okay. And the reason okay. that I haven't is because I think many people use those kinds of experiences to sensationally build an audience. And I'm not, I I'm, agree. Not, I'm never going to be guilty of that. I agree. But, but we were in a moment, it was in 1985 when it first happened, the Lord spoke to me. It's happened twice. And okay. Denise and I were in a really tough place and I was worried about a lot of things and it was one night I couldn't sleep because I was just tossing and turning. So I decided to go up and pray in the back room of a house. And I began to pray in tongues, walking back and forth in this room. And Joseph, the only way I know how to explain it is I prayed so deep in tongues. And I'm sure that this is experience. You've experienced this. It's like I became lost in tongues. I found myself in another room where I was just lost in, in, in the spirit and tongues. And when I opened my eyes, <clears throat> physically, I did not see that room. 
Now, I'm sure if someone had walked into that room, they would have seen me, but I would not have seen them because it was like the curtain to the spirit realm parted. And by the way, there's some things that only a revelation and an experience will teach you. You really can't talk about the spirit realm until you've been there. But it was like the spirit realm parted and I suddenly found myself in another dimension. Uh, if I looked around me, it was dark, not dark like eerie or spooky, but dense and eternal, had substance. And in the distance, I saw a light. The light was coming toward me. It got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until finally it was before me. And that's when I saw Jesus. And Jesus was seated in a chair. I could draw a picture of the chair. I mean, it's that vivid in my memory. Wow. And I went to my knees and the Lord began to speak to me about my ministry. Well, this was in 1985. I had no idea that I was going to move to the other side of the world. But the Lord reached out and took my hands. Have you ever read this in my testimony? No. He took one hand at a time and he put one hand under my hand, another hand on top of my hand. I say this like he sandwiched or pancaked my hands. And he said, these were his words. And I've heard other people since quote this. Okay. He said, he said to me, see, I have given you an anointing of love mixed with hate. And I said, what is that? I've never heard of wow. that. Wow. He said, that's what compassion is. He said, it's a divine flow of love mixed with hate. And when the two of them mingle together, it's compassion and it brings deliverance to people that are troubled. Then he took my other hand. He did the same thing. And then suddenly in the spirit, I saw myself walking through a hospital ward of people who were just suffering all around me, people that looked like they had been disadvantaged, people that hadn't been cared for, and they were in really unusual clothes, nothing like what I had grown up seeing in my life. I know okay. now I was looking at Soviet people. Wow. I did, but I didn't know it at the time. And the Lord said, I'm going to be sending you to a people who have really been mistreated, and you're going to take my compassion and my power to them. Yes. Isn't, that, isn't that amazing? It's so powerful. It's just, it's just amazing. And uh, the Lord said in that same moment, he said, see, I have given to you ministry on a measure that is already amassing more ministry. Well, that was in 1985. Denise and I were wondering, you know, how is our ministry going to develop? And the Lord said, I've given you ministry that already is amassing more ministry in the future. Well, let me just tell you, that word is really true. I've had more to do than I know how to do. And he said, I'm giving to you finances on a measure that are already amassing more finances. Well, Brother Joseph, I'm going to tell you, if I told you how much money has flown through this ministry just since we moved to the Soviet Union, it is staggering. It is. It's staggering. We're still in faith for everything we do because it just flows through our hands. Right. But I'm going to tell you, every word that Jesus said to me came to pass. And just like that, it was over. And when wow. it was over, I was on my knees. I was in that room and there was a desk there with a an electric typewriter back in those days, before there were computers. And I'm a writer, so I jumped up, went over, and put a piece of paper in the typewriter and typed out the whole experience. And I, st wow. and I still have that piece of paper. That was the first time. And that wow. was a pretty significant event in my life. Well, I believe that it, you know, when those kind of events are given to, to change and alter us. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rick. I, I really am honored and appreciate that you would share that with us. And I, I, I know that First John 3. I haven't shared anybody for years. So thank you for asking. I'm very privileged that you did. Uh, I know in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, it talks about that when we see him, we'll be made like him, for we'll see him as he is. And I personally mm -hmm. believe, and I'd like you to maybe comment on this in a, you know, for hope for our viewers, uh, that when we're caught away with the Lord, in my opinion, I believe that's when we're going to see him. And we'll be changed in that twinkling of an eye, uh, that, that suddenly... Uh, and will be transformed from this lowly state in our physical bodies to how he is brought into a glorious state like a transformed body. So not only through your vision did God, in my opinion, change you for what you were called to do. I believe 
every time we have an encounter with Jesus, we're going to be changed ultimately to the end. Can you comment on that catching away before you called it a rescue mission, but that catching away and change? Do you have any thoughts about that that would bring hope to our viewers? Well, I want to say a word first about spiritual experiences. They're very neat. Please. But you can't build your life on them. Right. Isn't it, isn't it interesting that when Peter wrote his epistle in 1 Peter chapter 1, he talked about the ultimate spiritual experience. He yeah. said, we heard a voice from the heavens. The glory of God was there. The earth shook. We were on the Mount of Transfiguration. I mean, you would call it the ultimate, ultimate experience. And then he ends by saying, right. however, we have a more sure word of prophecy. He's talking about the Bible. Yes. You can't build your life on those experiences. You have to build your life on the scripture. You don't give, you don't dismiss your experiences, but boy, they sure help you as you move forward. But the surest thing is building our life on the scriptures. Years ago, my grandmother used to say, if Jesus would just appear to me, then I would know that he really loved me. I'd say, Grandma, he doesn't need to appear to you for you to know that. That's right. He, he, the scriptures say he loves you. And so yes. people don't need to seek experiences, but be thankful with if they have one. Okay, about the catching away. Well, yeah. the, of course, we are caught away in experiences with the Lord. But the Bible does say that a day is coming in the future when we as a church are going to be caught up together with the Lord. It's going to happen. Right. And guess what? In First Thessalonians chapter 4, he says that our bodies will become incorruptible. And guess what the Greek word means? No more wear and tear. It's the awesome. ultimate plastic surgery. It's like we're going to be changed instantly. Everything's yeah. going to be fixed. We're going to be glorified. It is going to be amazing. And you know, Joseph, I've been studying about those things for years. But only recently, because I'm working on the RIV, which is the Renner Interpretive Version of the New Testament. I translate Can't wait it. for that, Rick. Thank, thank you. I'm, I'm really working on it. But I've been working on those verses. And when it says that we're going to be caught up, it's the Greek word apo harpazo. This is real important. The word apo means away from. Harpazo means to snatch just in the nick of time. Mm. Which means this catching away is probably going to happen in a pretty dark moment. Wow. It's going to happen, the Greek word literally, to snatch out of danger just in the nick of time, which means mm -hmm. Jesus is going to say, okay, that's as far as it goes. They're out of here. Bam. Wow. It will be removed. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's the same word, same word that is used to describe Philip the evangelist when he was finished preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch, the very same word. And he was caught away, he just disappeared, showed up in another place. It is the very same word. And it really describes a supernatural catching away, being transported into another realm. And even when the Bible says to meet the Lord in the air, oh my goodness, <laughs> that word meet is a word which describes a VIP reception. It means the Lord is gonna roll out the red carpet to receive us for who we really are. That's who we are. We're his VIP people. That's so it's awesome. Amazing. It's so awesome. It's, I like how you say that, and that when that time comes and it's a dark moment, we may not be in the great tribulation, but we might think we are. It's, it's that serious. Well, that's right, and it, it might feel like it. It will not be the great tribulation, but it might be so bad that we feel like it is. But, <laughs> just, just in the nick of time, we'll be removed. That's it's wonderful. And you know, when we talk about things like the rapture, that to me is not escapism. I'm not thinking about, boy, we just got to get out of here. It is just wonderful to know that the Lord will come at the right time when it's supposed to happen. All his plans will come to pass, but it actually gives me encouragement to lean into the darkness and be the light in darkness and continue to rise and, and bring it forward. You know, one of the things you talk about so eloquently, and I, you know, I, I brought um, kind of this special stack of books here. I don't know if you recognize any of these ones. Uh, these are several what I would call Rick Renner masterpieces. Some of my favorite ones are actually these two right here. These guys right here. I don't know if people can mm -hmm. see these, but I've got two books called Light and Darkness, Volume 1 and 2. Right. And Rick really goes into stuff. If you haven't gotten a copy of these, you need to. Light and Darkness, uh, Volume 1 and 2. I've read these. They're just absolute masterpieces. And 
what I want to say about it is you go into volume one and re really begin to talk about the seven churches in the book of Revelation and how Jesus walks among them and he's looking over them and saying, here's where you lack, here's where you're winning, and uh, here's what you need to do about it. Do you see that as a very relevant word now for the church that we're living in right now, the, the of, days we're living in? Of course, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did is what yes. he does. And in yeah. those chapters, it says Jesus walked, very interesting, it says he walked in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The word Come walk on. is the Greek word peripatao, which means to walk circles, to walk circles. Mm. And it's the picture of Jesus walking around the church to take an exterior view. But the whole verse says he walks in the midst, which means when the Lord is finished walking around us and looking at us from the outside, he says, now I'm coming in. And he comes in and he watches. Now, what does he watch? Well, you have to study Jesus to find out what he watches. And I think one of the great exa examples is in Luke chapter 20, uh, 17, when Jesus was in the temple and he was watching as the people gave their offerings. Now, just yeah. imagine this. If you guys were given your offerings and I stood right over the offering bucket to watch you give and to see how much you put in. You would probably say, is it okay to just give me a little space here? This is my private room. <laughs> but Jesus was standing there and he was watching. If you're reading the Greek, he was watching how the people gave. He was looking at the amount, but he was also how? looking at the how, with what kind of reverence, with what kind of attitude. And the rich men were just casting in out of their abundance. The little woman came by with two mites, and the Bible says she placed into the treasury very reverently. And when Jesus saw her, her amount, which for her was huge, but when he saw how she did it, that's when he said, stop, 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 I have something to say. This woman has done something magnificent. Jesus was watching what, and he was watching how. Mm. And today... Oh. Based on Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus walking around the church, coming in the church. And when he comes in, he watches how we listen, how we pray, yeah. how, yeah. how we give, how. The how is really how. to the Lord. You can yes. do everything right, but not do it with the right attitude. So he's looking both at our actions and he's looking at the, the how, the motivation behind it all. But I'll just tell you personally, Joseph, that when I'm preaching publicly, I usually just choose an empty seat and say, well, I'm just going to pretend Jesus is sitting in that one right there. He still comes wow. to church. He watches what we do. He watches how we do it. And I'm going to do my best today because Jesus is observing me. So I regularly do that. I think that's a very powerful word for any minister, especially every person, but every minister should have that mindset that I'm preaching. That's right. For Jesus. Yeah, if for you, Jesus. If you remember that Jesus is sitting right there and you're speaking on his behalf, mm -hmm. you're going to be a little bit more careful what you do when you're in that pulpit. Yes. It's not my pulpit. It's a privilege to stand there. Yes. And, and my job is to speak what he tells me to speak, not just to crack jokes. I'm not saying you can't have a good time. Of course you can. But the pulpit is a place where we are to prophetically speak for the Lord. Powerful, Rick. I, it's, it's so powerful. I, you know, that, that brings me to another thought that what we're seeing, I believe, in the world right now is so much of what's going on with both the, we'll call it the seeker-friendly movement. We'll call mm -hmm. it a number of things that have almost been the business of ministry that have built huge ivory towers and things and, and no criticism for anything uh, because a lot of times people begin to, I don't know, I think Jesus is the head of the church. He deals with this church. It's not our position to attack people and all that. But at the same time, I do believe that we're going to begin to see such a turnover of some of what has been a superficial Christianity, a superficial um, way of uh, the business of ministry and we're going to begin to see more of a return to the real church standing up like you're talking about that honors jesus and um i i do, do you see a lot of that changing in the culture at least from your perspective uh the the change of some of the 
I don't know, the, the seeker movements to more of a Holy Ghost Jesus movement? I think that we can see a sifting to determine who is who. Yes. I think people that really have a heart for the Lord are moving in one direction. Yep. And I think people who are changing what they believe are moving, they're, they're not going to mix with us anymore. We, we don't, we right. don't, it's like oil and water. They're becoming progressive in their beliefs, progressive about sexuality. They're adapting to the, the spirit of the age and we're not budging. Right. So they, so they really don't fit together and we can love them even though we don't agree with them. And guess what? They don't agree with us. That's right. That's right. So we just have, we have to do what we believe is right. I want to tell you a story. Uh, maybe I've told you before, but I was preaching in a church, big church on the East coast. And we had a, th a three day meeting and it was just packed out. I mean, packed out and night after all three nights. And the last night I was sitting in the pastor's office. I'd never been there before. I really didn't know him very well. And he was just kind of looking at me. And I said, sir, sir, may I ask you what you're thinking? He said, yeah. He said, you're a dinosaur. I said, Whoa. what? <laughs> I've never been called. I'd have that guy, right? I'm, 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 I'm a Rex, I'm a Stegosaurus, I'm a what when am I? I said, what does that mean? I'm a dinosaur. He said, when you moved to the Soviet Union, he said, you just continued with what you've always been. He said, in these decades you've been gone, the rest of us have moved on and we're no longer where we used to be. But you're like something frozen in time. It's just so wonderful to see it. Oh, it's wonderful thought, to see. That's the first time I've ever had to be called a dinosaur. <laughs> I don't know that I like that, Rick. I might have said some very wonderful things to that person. But uh, I love that you have what I call staying power. And um, a lot of people may say, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. There's three categories of people that I define, and this is something that God's shown me. It's one of my prophetic visions about the burnt stones, the Cinderella's, and the young lions. Now, these are kind of, you know, just prophetic symbolism. And the burnt stones represent the older, like John Rambo types that, you know, got kind of burnt out on life, and they go to the back 40, and they get disregarded until an emergency comes. The Cinderella's are those that are captivated in cages and all this stuff, and they've got to... Um, you know, bring their inspiration forward because it's being used for institutionalism instead of being used for what God purposed them to do. And the young lions, to me, that's the most pivotal thing. You know, Proverbs says, the glory of the young men is their strength and the glory of the older men is their gray hair, which I consider wisdom. And when somebody says, hey, you, you know, you haven't changed, you know, like dinosaur type stuff, whatever, I actually consider that a very high compliment because that means that the older generation, the burnt stones who paid a price who carved away, did what they're supposed to do. They're the very ones that will stand up and be the answer for the generation of young lions that don't know how to navigate society, don't know how to do it, but they have a lot of drive. So they're either gonna burn down the kingdom of darkness or they're gonna burn cities like they did a few years ago. And I believe it is the burnt stones, it is the dinosaurs that will stand up and absolutely cause the young lions to not grow la uh, weary and lack and hunger and all that stuff. They'll actually feed them, cause them to live. Um, the younger generation needs the warriors like you, Rick. You, Without you, we have a lot of aimless, uh, unguided, no torch in the darkness. Um, so that's my response to that statement. I actually think you are one of the most vital voices on the planet. That's how I view uh, oh, the, the older yeah, lions. Thank, that's too much, but thank you for that. You know, you're, we're just supposed to do what we're supposed to do, and we're supposed to be consistent. Yeah. And, you know, if you're consistent, you're already ahead of the, you're already ahead of the rest of the gang. Yeah, because true. most people are up and down, they're all around. But when day after day, when people know you're the same thing, that you can be trusted, that your word is the same, that your integrity is real, you already have a platform that other people do not have. And Joseph, it's the best thing you have to give to people. But I have That's a question good. for you. Please, if the glory if the glory of old men is their gray hair. What about you and me? <laughs> we have action hero hair, my friend. Action. <laughs> this, is, this, this haircut has saved the world many times in cinema. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, 
You know, it's a, it's a powerful thing talking with you, Rick. Here's a, here's a question I have for you. Um, what is one of the most exciting projects you have going on right now? What is, what is the thing that's moving you and inspiring you the most right now? Uh, whether it's a book or a project, what is the thing in front of you that you say, boy, that is inspiring me? Everything I do. I mean, there's so much we're doing right now. We're we're feed, we're providing food to displaced people. We're spending yeah. hundreds and thousands of dollars helping people. Yeah. Of course, we're teaching the Bible. I wake up every day excited to stand in front of a camera. And the privilege of teaching the Bible. I'm translating the New Testament. I'm writing books. I'm working with the church. We have our online church. Can you imagine our online church has 200,000 people that attend? I mean, that's a significant church. And so, but you know, the thing about, I was laughing the other day that somebody was talking about Russia and they were saying, we need to pray for, you know, a revival in Russia. They're living in revival and they have forgotten. And that's the thing. When you're living in the middle of something great, you adapt to it. And sometimes you forget. Wow. And so probably you, the people that we're speaking to, a lot of them are really living in amazing miracles, but they've adapted to it. We need to not forget what we're living in. I'm in the middle of something amazing. And I say it to myself every day. Yeah. And my son, Joel, every morning, my son, Joel, will say, Joel, what are you going to do? He'll say, Dad, I'm going to go out and change the world today. He says that every day. I love it. And I think, I think we have to have be very intentional that that's, that's what we're here to do. And don't forget that you're living in a miracle. You're living in a miracle. Think of the people that are listening to you. But you know what? You do this every day. You can lose the wonder of it all. Don't lose it. It's wonderful what God is doing. Wow. That's a really powerful word, Rick, to not lose the wonder of it all. You know, there's so many of you watching right now. You're watching this broadcast. You're watching Rick and and just hearing what he has to say. Um, I encourage you not only to check out Rick's ministry, uh, renner.org is the place to do that. You'll see that here on the screen. And I encourage you to not only check out Rick's ministry, but I, I encourage you to find ways to partner, to support this ministry, to do whatever you can. I know you're building a, a brand new studio right now, Rick. It's, it's, it's advancing. You're taking territory. In the middle of unbelievable odds, you are building a studio that's just world class. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's what the anointing does. The anointing pushes hell out of the way. The anointing just keeps moving forward. You know that, Joseph. Yes. You know, the, we're, we're talking about an anointing that raised Jesus from the dead. Was there anything okay. bigger to push out of the way than that? Yeah. And so, you know, whatever it's a studio or whether it's you doing what you're doing or your listener doing what they're doing, we have within us the greater one. The greater one really lives in us. Yeah, it's amazing that God would put his treasure in us, but he did. X marks the spot <laughs> and God's treasure is right here. And yeah. if we will yield to it, it will quicken our mortal flesh when we feel weak. Yes. And it will work through us to do the impossible, whatever it is. That's amazing. Well, you said before too, obedience is a magnet. And when you're yes. obedient, it's a magnet. It just draws things to you. You know, Rick, um, I, I just have to say for our audience, uh, for you, um, I, I don't know how to say it any better, and this isn't flattery. I'm not trying to go down that road. All I'm saying to you is every time I speak with you, I'm better. Every time I hear your teaching, it causes me to go higher. You make me want to be a tremendous minister to hit the goal that God's called us to hit. And I, I, I don't know how to thank you enough for the work you've done, for the way you've inspired so many of us to lead uh, and, and be just better. Um, there's a, a, a minister that I used to know many years ago. He's with, home with Jesus now. But I'd say, how are you doing? How are things going? And he'd say, I'm improving. <laughs> His answer was always, I'm improving. And... Rick, you know, I just, uh, you, your family, the tremendous work you've done, I consider you a true apostle of Jesus Christ in the earth today. And uh, it's a very rare thing to have somebody that really is such an example. And your written material, I've learned more from your written material than all my years in Bible college. So I'm, well, I'm grateful to you. you. For, thank you. Yeah, for all of that. So, you know, we, well, we are say, in I wanna, perilous times. Can I say something to your, can I say something to your viewers? Oh, please. Please, sir. Hey, guys, if you want a ministry to support that's really doing a fine job, support Joseph. 
He's doing a great job. Consistent, pressing through. Anybody that's consistent, my goodness, they are worth your support. And if you look at what he has on his website, and I have, it's all great materials, rock solid. And so if you're looking for a place to support and to do something significant, I just want to encourage you to help him. No, I'm really honored, sir. Thank you. I, I, yeah. Rick, I, I know that we're coming into uh, times that there's just going to be more and more collision. Things are going to happen. But I just want to say this. I'm excited. I am thrilled for the opportunity to be alive in these times. And I know that uh, you're in nations, you're seeing things that we're not seeing right now to the level that, that I think we'll be seeing in the future. And I want to just thank you for your stand. And, you know, we're, we're getting close here to our time today. But what I'd like to say is, would you please consider just uh, sharing a encouraging word with our viewers right now? Please just whatever's on your heart to share with us. Help us today, Rick. What well, Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, and I've been thinking about this. In this world, you'll have tribulation. Yeah. The word tribulation is the word thalipsis. It means you're going to be in some really hard place, hard, hard places, very tight places. And that's where we all are, all of us. But then he said, be a good cheer. And yet, the word good cheer doesn't mean be happy. It really means speak to yourself and cheer yourself up. Sometimes the best preacher is you. You need to preach to your own ears. Cheer yourself up. And Jesus told us why. I have overcome the world. That word overcome, the wow. Greek word nikao, means to master. The word world, the Greek word cosmos, it describes every world system that exists. I would translate, be of good cheer. I have overcome every system. Every system. And we have, we have a faith that causes us to come above everything. We can override the lack of finances. We can override the pressure. We can override the tension. We can override anything. We have a faith that overrides it all, but we have to embrace it. So that's the word I want to leave with your friends. I appreciate it so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching today. Uh, here is an apostle of the faith, man of God. I encourage you, if you're watching today, check out Rick Renner. He's got um, more broadcasts than you can imagine. He is a teaching machine by the grace of God. Uh, one day I think we'll be able to try to keep up with that. I think it's tremendous. I encourage you to check him out. He's uh, got Rick Renner on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you got the Good News Church, the Moscow Good News Church, uh, and not only all the books he's written. I really encourage you to plug in with him daily, especially on Facebook and all these other areas. If you'll watch this and you'll just listen, you will find yourself being corrected, not only doctrinally, but your heart for God will begin to grow and you're going to find you attain staying power. I really encourage you to do everything you can to unite with this ministry, with, with Renner Ministries, with Rick Renner. Um, praise God, Rick. I just love you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm honored that you, every time we have the privilege of having you on this broadcast, uh, you know, you just declare Jesus as Lord so loudly by your life. And um, thank you for your voice here. Thank you for what you've done on the world. And um, I love you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pray for me. Bye-bye. I will. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Well, ladies and gentlemen, check out Rick. I encourage you to do so. And let's all be praying for Rick with all that's happening around the world today. Thank you, Jesus. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've had a great day and I'm thankful you're here. Have a, have a wonderful day. Jesus is Lord. He is the voice of God. And I look forward to seeing everyone again next time. Rick, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Well, I am so glad you joined us today. You know, we have a lot happening in this ministry and it's because of monthly partners that helps us continue reaching people by the millions. Currently, we have a project and it's called the Diamond Air 62 Project. Affectionately, we call it the Red Eagle One Campaign. This aircraft can take up to seven people. We can travel anywhere in the nation and as mandates get stricter and the times get more and more difficult, we believe we will have our own ability to travel and be a blessing to people all over at no cost to them. I encourage you to become a partner today. You can do that by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. 
If you partner today, you're going to find that there is a great partner care in our ministry that will reach out to you. They will love you. Different team members will be contacting you. They'll pray with you. They will prophesy to you. They're just going to love on you. And I got to tell you, our partner care is wonderful. These guys love you and they're looking forward to talking to you. Another thing I want to say to you is please consider signing up for our email list. You want to sign up so we can stay in contact because we're building new platforms all the time. If the social media becomes more stringent or difficult or maybe you just can't find us, if you sign up for our email list, it'll be a tremendous blessing for you and for us and we can stay in touch and you can find where we are all the time. Thank you so much for watching today. Jesus is Lord and I want to say a great thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. Together, I think we can change the world.